Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing my series on how to sing like, and next up is John Bon Jovi. Uh, before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel, that'd be really cool. Don't forget to ring the bell so I can keep new cool videos coming your way. And I have a singing course, and the course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com where the proof is in the singing. <laughs> and I have a free singing forum on there as well for you guys just kind of kicking the tires, wanting to you know, see if singing might be interesting for you or if you're an intermediate singer, you want to take your singing to the next level or you're an advanced singer and you want to take your singing to the highest levels. You can join my free singing forums to kind of see what KTBA is all about. It's free. So check it out at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com. And uh, I'm going to dive right into John Bon Jovi. I uh, did get a chance to meet him a couple times. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But um, anyway, let's just fire it up. Here we go. This is going to be, by the way, I chose a smattering of songs. I have a lot of Bon Jovi stuff I've covered because I did a, a horizontal, um, excuse me, lateral, yeah, lateral uh, thing of a bunch of uh, Bon Jovi tunes um, because I got a lot of requests for it. So I thought I would just do a bunch of them and then kind of release them all back to back with like a, a tribute to John Bon Jovi. So with that said, um, I'm going to start with Living on a Prayer and he, he's, he, um, believe it or not, John uh, is more intricate than you might guess because a lot of his stuff is a little more diverse. I mean, he might come off a little one-dimensional with his singing. I've heard a lot of the, you know, the bravado rock guys, oh, I don't like John Bon Jovi. Eh, he's, he's not as easy as you think. Some of his stuff's pretty hard to sing, pretty high, and then he does a lot of acoustic stuff that's pretty interesting from a storytelling standpoint. So let's dive in and check it out. Now, before we get into the chorus, a couple things. He sings very small. His sound is very, you know, uh, 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 Gino used to look on the ducks. He sings really, really small. So if you want to kind of get into that John Bon Jovi sound, if you've got a bigger voice like me, and, or like I'm high baritone, so if you want to try to get into that sound, you need to spin on strike. It's down on his luck. It's tough. So tough. All you've got to do, have a little bit of that Jersey accent and put everything really far into the front of the face and I'll add a little distortion to the sound and you're getting closer to John Bon Jovi, right? I'm not making fun of his sound. I'm actually just sincerely, try sincerely trying to demonstrate how to get into that space into the front of the face, okay? Now, a couple things. First is, like I said, I got a chance to meet him, but before we do this, I want to say, um, I've said this quote. I'm going to continue to repeat this because I really want to drive this point home, okay? Singing, in this case, is not a way for demonstration is a way to teach something. It's not a way. Demonstration is the only way to teach something. So in order for me to show you something, I can't just tell you how to do it or, you know, this is how you start to sound like Bon Jovi. No, if you want to sound like Bon Jovi, you got to dig in and find out what he does, okay? Now, John did take some lessons back early in the day. I heard that he slacked off quite a bit uh, while touring and whatnot and got, you know, by to a certain level and then slacked off again, you know, mid midlife, later in life. And it, it, cut, it cost him his voice. I mean, if you listen to John now, I love John. I think he's an awesome dude. But, um, you know, he has a real tough time singing any of this stuff and certainly not like he did back in the day. Now, it's my personal opinion that if he did some things right, he'd be able to reconstruct his voice and get most of this stuff back, but it would require a total rehabilitation. And I'm not sure someone like that's willing or wanting to even do something like that. So with that said, um, I say that because we're about the same age. I think he's one year older than me, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and this is how I sound like right now. I just did the song not that long ago and you hear how kind of John sounds these days. So the proof is in the singing and the technique is in the singing. So again, um, demonstration isn't a way to teach. It's the only way to teach. So if there's people on the internet that aren't physically doing this and singing whole songs like this, showing you how to do it and demonstrating other students as well, 
they can't teach you how to do it, at least not the total sum of these songs. They might give you a little trick and you might get like a, a you know, a parlor trick to kind of almost, sound, hey, dirty wabbit, you know, <laughs> something kind of funny to make you kind of think you're sounding like it just because you can mimic someone a little bit. But I mean, actually dig in and sound like them totally. So here we go. thing too is um, there were a lot of bands in the 80s like this that were notorious for big anthemic choruses and John sort of set the precedent for that in these giant big anthemic choruses but John also did something different I'm gonna get to that in a minute too where he he appealed more to a songwriter crowd or I should say he, he got more into songwriting like acoustic songwriter crowd uh, and did a lot of movie soundtrack stuff too that was very very effective and he did a great job and his lyrics were killer um, one thing I want to say about John too is um, Probably one of the hardest working dudes in all the show business. I mean, you know, very, very good businessman. Uh, he had, in fact, there was one story, I'm not sure if this is true, but it sounds legit because it sounds like something John would do. Uh, he was asked to play in Russia and I think Doc McGee was his manager at the time. And so um, they couldn't pay him. The rubles, I guess, was worth nothing. And I think that's the currency at the time. And so, um, they were trying to figure out a way how he could play in Russia, but not pay for it himself. And John, I think, said to Doc McGee, well, do they have any commodities? Do anything we could trade uh, to be able to, you know, maybe sell or something? And so they looked into it and, and John found out that they had, they're actually big uh, uh, exporters of lumber, of wood, of lumber. And he goes, pay me in wood. <laughs> so they did. And he did this, you know, big Russian tour when only, I think only the Scorpions and maybe Dio. And I want to say, um, gosh, there was a couple bands, very few bands went over onto the, in, into Russia and did, you know, some Russian stuff. I think Motorhead did too. But, uh, anyway, so John did that and actually got paid, which is pretty interesting through, through lumber. So good businessman. So hardest working man. So when I met John and again, not try to, you know, talk story with you guys, but when I met John, um, Again, it was backstage at, I met him a couple times, but this time, the first time was backstage at a Monsters of Rock Festival. I shared this before a couple times, but on the bill was, he was kind of low on the totem pole of the bill, and I think this was before Fahrenheit came out, but it was Bon Jovi, it was Michael Shanker Group, actually Macaulay Shanker Group, uh, it was, um, Le uh, not Lita Ford, was it Lita Ford? No, 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 it was um, Dora Pesh, sorry. Uh, and it was the Scorpions, it was Ozzy, it was Def Leppard, like all these crazy bands were on this bill. And he was actually warming up kind of midday, you know, dusk, midday for a lot of these bands. And when I met him, he was just like the nicest guy, straight up, just cordial, talk to anybody, shake anybody's hand, hang out, you know, back when I used to drink, have a beer, <laughs> you know, whatever. And, and and I say that because that was that was John, you know, that was legitimately John. He was just a, he was just a down to earth Jersey boy and whatever. And you and it and it comes out in his music. So, you know, a lot of these guys, you, you kind of wonder who they really are as people. I don't know what his beef was with Richie. Uh, and I think Richie kicked him in the butt a bit as far as vocals, because Richie is a good, great vocalist himself. So it must have pushed John to have to you know, stay on his game. So anyway, enough story. Let's continue. Here we go. Six-string and hock. Real, get it right. You is built on strike. He's down on his luck. It's tough. So tough. You hear I got that, right? Now, in this video, I'm actually so tough. And I'm singing more like Ken Tamplin in the song, right? And then you get to the choruses and there's some big high choruses. I've got a lot of songs I want to cover, so I don't want to monopolize that. But I wanted to go ahead and say, okay, so there's that part of John. Then there's the storytelling part. So let me just kind of dive in here. This is Blaze of Glory movie soundtrack stuff. Check this out. Wake up in the morning and I raise my weary head. Got an old coat for a pillow. Great lyric. And the earth was last night's bed. I don't know where I'm going. Only God knows where I've been. I'm a devil on the run. A six gun lover. A candle in the wind. 
That was if David Coverdale were to sing Bon Jovi. So that's not the fairest thing, how to sing like John. It's how David Coverdale would sing like John. But you know, <laughs> he used a lot of air in the front side. So I wake up in the morning. So I'm gonna sing it more like John with you guys, okay? So get right in here with me. I wake up in the morning and I raise my weary head. Got a no coat for a pillow. And the earth was last night's bed, right? Everything's real small and in the face. And if you do that, you're gonna notice, wow, yeah, it really does sound like John. And he adds a lot of air to the front side of this, right? Uh, in order to get the emotion and a lot of the intimacy out of it. And then he kind of hits you really hard in the chorus. So let's continue. <laughs> They say you're born in sin Well, at least they gave me something I didn't have to steal or have to win Well, they tell me that I'm wanted Okay, now, again, that was like Paul Rogers stepped in for the second verse. When you're born into this world They say you're born in sin Right, John didn't do it that way. He was like, when, you, when you're born into this world they say you're born in sin. Right? He's, he's real he's, um, straight on it. He's nowhere near as bluesy. Now, Richie would have been bluesier on the sound. So had Richie done this, and you could tell by, you know, dead or alive, I'm gonna get to that in a minute, Richie kind of was more of the bluesy side, the soulful side of a lot of this stuff. And I wouldn't be surprised if if John got a lot of his soul from Richie, because a lot of the stuff that John sang mid, mid Bon Jovi kind of sounded like something Richie would have done. Maybe that's why Richie got pissed off and was like, hey man, that's, you know, that's, that's mine. Or, Maybe it didn't feel feel fairly treated and maybe some of the songwriting and stuff. Because uh, I know Richie contributed significantly to a lot of the songs. So there's that. And, I, and I'll put all these in the description. You guys can scrutinize these later. But um, so there's that part of it. Now, I'm going to get to One of Dead of Alive because he doesn't use the same. This is an earlier tune, as you know. But he doesn't use the same air in the sound because he's not looking for the same intimacy. This is One of Dead or Alive. So it's all the same. A little bit of air, but not a ton. Only the names have changed every day. It seems we're wasting away another place where the faces are so cold. I drive all night just to get back home. Okay, so he's kind of hitting it right out of the gate with Lou. Uh, you know, it's all the same. Right, and now only the names have changed. You, right? So you kind of you kind of get the feeling that that was kind of maybe Richie. Like Richie could have sung the whole song, you know, like, yeah, okay, I kind of get it, right? I'm not saying that that's what happened, but it just kind of sounds like that to me because you want it, right? And I do the answers on the same song. So I'll put this in the description too, but it's just a great songwriting, um, excuse me, great storytelling, great lyrics, really good songwriting, guys. So for those of you guys that say, uh, John Bon Jovi, you know, he's not like the greatest singer. I don't know. What makes a great singer to me is the total package. And John had the total package. He was cute. You know, he could perform night after night. He was a hardworking dude. Uh, wrote great songs, good storyteller, big anthemic stuff, good ballads, wrote for movie soundtracks. Hey, man, come on. Let's, you know, let's give credit where credit's due. So now I talked about you know, about this this Einstein quote, right? That, you know, demonstration is an A way to teach. It's it's the only way to teach. So I did uh, something with my student, Aliona. Um, she did a version, so I'm just gonna play uh, Aliona's version. Check it out. Human's been on strike. He's down on his luck. He's
that's Aliona. I also did a version of this, uh, not that, but I did something I'm pretty sure with Gaston, uh, my student um, from Mexico, uh, who's also a really great singer too, and has really uh, come into his own with all the singing and all these different styles. So if I can, I'll. Like I said, I'll put all this stuff in the description. You guys can check it all out. I want to I want to give you one more tune here. Um, this is another hard tune to do. Shot through the heart in your tube, babe, darling. You give love a bad name. Before I get into the verse of this, um, I did the most epic vocal intros of all time and included this as one of the things, and Carry On My Wayward Son, some other songs like that. There really weren't a lot of um, anthemic intros to songs, so it was kind of risky for them to come out, boom, hit you with the chorus right away, and it really caught your attention and you really knew what you were in for. So I thought that was an interesting approach. Some bands did, not very many. I know Little River Band did it, you know, I don't know if you guys remember that band, and I put them in the greatest uh, vocal intro of all time too but and and by the way too I added some that weren't just anthemic I added some that were just notorious or really well known uh, so if you get a chance you want to check that out but this was one of those times too where Bon Jovi was made a lot of um, you know made a lot of statements with his music so it's like okay no one's really done a lot of this I'm just gonna BAM hit him with the chorus right at the front rather than this big long buildup like a lot of bands did and then they would tease you tease you tease you tease you until you got to the chorus so John was an exception to that and really pioneered uh, t a trend setting in that so I love this line I like the video too flying around your smile is what you sell. You promised me heaven, then put me through hell. Chains of a love, gotta hold on me. Coverdale stepping in for verse. Prison, you can't break free. Oh, okay, now, again, I went, chains of a love, gotta hold on me. Right, instead, chains of love, gotta hold on me. And then, then, Right, that's more of the John thing if I'd really been like John, but I wanted to sound like me. And that makes it, it brings me to another point, guys. Again, this series is not about, you know, how to sing exactly like this artist and mimic them exactly. We don't want to do that, guys. We want to get an inspiration from them. We want to get, you know, a little bit of their influence and whatnot. And we want to put that in our toolbox so we can have a nice big palette for singing paint, a nice big picture for our own unique voices and not sound just like someone else. Now, I've heard it said, you know, you should want to sing like yourself. Don't sound like anybody else. That's ridiculous. What a nonsense statement that is. Whenever anyone says that, we all have influences. And it's what we do with those influences that makes us great. The more influences that we have, the bigger our palette is to paint this big broad stroke painting picture of who we are as singers. To say, you know, you don't want to sound like anybody. You don't want to do this. Well, that's malarkey. When I was growing up as a guitar player, man, I, I remember first I wanted to sound like Jimmy Page. I learned a bunch of Jimmy Page. Then I, I when I first heard Jeff Beck, I went, oh, I'd, I'd like to sound like Jeff Beck too. Then I heard Al DiMiel, I go, wow, I hope I want to sound like that guy, right? Because he was great. I heard John McLaughlin, you know, some of, the, uh, some of the progressive guitar players. And then, you know, Joe Perry and, and, and whatever, Eric Clapton and Carlos Santana. So growing up, I got a chance to like hear all these really great guys, Uli Roth, you know, Michael Schenker, Ted Nugent, there was these guys. And I'd take a little of this and a little of that and all these guys I'm like wow is you inc incorporate this and you include this and it becomes part of you in this case as a singer then it makes you great at singing so can so people say Ken how did you become a great singer well I used all these influences growing up and I internalized them and I represent them with my own spin and my own uniqueness um, that I like of things I like in singing John's one of those guys especially from a songwriting standpoint and this big uh, you know big anthemic kind of sound so uh, let's continue here we go I want to point out one more thing for my bluesy guys out there and my Richie Sambora fans. 
I sang this heavy. I sang it bigger. I sang it more like Coverdale, Paul Rogers, Lou Graham, Glenn Hughes. You know, shot to the heart and you're to blame. You know, kind of like a Dio sort of approach. And and then Bon Jovi, John Wayne, guy, shot to the heart and you're to blame. He would have been real small on the sound. It's a lot more difficult to be really big and round on that sound and pull that sound up to give a big, robust, you know, manly lion roar kind of sound than it is to kind of do what John has done and, and, and point that sound square in the face. So I would recommend, believe it or not, before you try to take on a big round sound like that, to start really small, what I call little boy voice. Now, I cover all of this in my singing course because I want you guys to understand good open throat technique and how to get all these resonators and all the pockets in the face and good support and you know good open throat technique good tone um, get that first before attempting lifting a lot of weights you know as you're trying to pull this stuff up for a bigger sound so with that said um, check out my next video